to be one joined by the capitalists and we'll take you through what could be one thrilling best of five series in one of the greatest locations here in europe commerce bank arena esl1 finals eg their second time appearing here but no 22-0 you couldn't ask for a better venue and in my opinion better teams to face up against the in the finals i mean evil geniuses and secret have a storied pass back and forth they had met multiple finals in multiple land events and have series that have gone either way, right? And this makes this final, right before we go into TI, all the more important for one of these teams to establish dominance as basically the top team in the world right now. That's what we're looking at here. Yep, it's uh, it's fantastic teams. We've got a, a small little problem with the players. We'll get this sorted out ASAP for them. Everything has to be absolutely perfect for EG as well as Secret, but luckily the ESL crew, they've been working hard throughout the entire weekend. And of course, while it might have actually started to start raining is not going to dampen our spirits for this game. Not only have we been here the entire time, this absolutely wonderful crowd here in Frankfurt has also been here, sticking with us through thick and thin and have gotten themselves to have the grand final, which a lot of people were expecting. They were expecting EG versus Secret. It's exactly what they got. This, this crowd has been amazing, by the way. I mean, just hearing the roar of the crowd every single time we see one of those big plays, man, I've, I've actually talked to a couple of people who are completely new to Dota, and they've just been blown away by the, just the atmosphere here of everyone getting so excited over seeing top two teams like this playing up against each other. Evil geniuses. So, Toby, Yep. I don't know about you, but I have been feeling very torn on this finals. People kept asking me, okay, who do you got for the finals? Who's going to win the finals? And mm -hmm. I kept responding with a different answer every single time because I couldn't decide. <laughs> I, I kept telling them, you know what, my heart is for EG, but my head is for Secret. You know, I felt like, I just feel like EG, this is their chance to be able to finally take a first place finish after, you know, it's been a while since we've seen them do that. Uh, meanwhile, Secret have been looking really strong. I mean, their series up against IG was impressive all hell. Yeah, man, they, they've been playing amazingly. Secret can basically do anything they want to, when they want to, and how they want to. They don't care what the meta is, they'll make their own. While EG, they, while they might loosely stick to the meta, for them, their timing, their rotations, PPD and Alby, their combination together is wonderful to watch. Universe on the offlane having a lot more of an impact in this competition than I've been seeing him have in previous competitions. And of course, the boy wonder Samael. He has been Absolutely unstoppable. His two performances during the semi-final, I don't think you'll see a better example of how a mid can walk over a team. Both teams have so much to play for, and at this point, Gap, I'm going to say I'm massively biased towards good Dota 2. These guys are going to play awesome Dota, and we're going to be rewarded for a full best of five. The more games we have, the greater it will be. What a cop-out. So you're not going to side with either one of these no, teams, are you? You're not, not going to make it. All right, well, I feel like Secret's... Looking at just this draft, I feel like Evil Geniuses are going to take game one. I really like the EG lineup, and I think Hans, I think, was the first person to say, you know, Secret are put on a timer here, and they got to close out the game pretty early. They need to be able to play this game uh, uh, pretty perfectly, essentially, because you've got a lot of problems uh, uh, potentially for our Sven. Sven is a really great physical damage carry, especially when coupled up with the Wisp, that is able to burst down heroes really quickly with his insane amount of physical damage. It's good versus certain core such as Leshrac, who are relatively squishy and can output a large amount of damage over time. But then you look at certain carries like Razor, who are sort of the antithesis to the Sven. Excellent at being able to kite around melee heroes. Not so much with the, the Wisp, but still, it is a factor. And of course, being able to drain away that Sven's damage via Static Link is going to be a big factor as well. So, uh, the Sven is going to have some issues. Maybe he can clear through some mail pretty quickly, but Fear is still going to be his nemesis. You're 100% right, man. So it's all about about positioning for Secret. The supports will have to do a hell of a lot of work, but our laning phase is already underway, so up on top is PPD and Universe. We're in this dual combo, but Universe, the first turn is just harassment, nothing much more than that, but then again with Kuro and Puppy being tethered together, Universe is forced to Icarus dive away down to 51 Jeez. HP, and PPD just puts a stopper on the lane with Aphysia. He needs to hold this creep wave at bay so Universe can find his level 2, and of course be a little bit safer near that tower now that Icarus dive is on cooldown. Yeah, I was going to say 
as I was watching the draft, I love the Phoenix last pick. I feel it really tied together e the Evil Geniuses lineup quite well, and I love it paired up with the Phoenix. I mean, first of all, just the laning phase is so much better for a Phoenix if you're able to get just a couple of Fissure blocks and move the Creep Wave equilibrium to the Phoenix's favor so it can pick up level two, maybe even level three. But notice what Secret are doing. They are doing an incredibly good job controlling this equilibrium. Despite the blocks of the Fissures, they've managed to still keep the lane pushing into their tower. Speaking of Fissure as well, notice PPD's rotation. He walked up on top of the little stairwell just north of the mid lane. It's just in uh, this little stairwell up here, a little bit further north. Uh, and he was waiting for the opening to actually have a crack at S4. But the Dire Observer wards from Secret are so perfectly placed. One watching the top ward area and the rotation down from top, which is where they knew the Earthshaker would start. And then the second one on, on the S4 side of the lane, so he can keep tabs on this. And that'll allow him to see if Earthshaker's trying to throw one from the other side. Kuro and Universe just trading blows. No one should be able to find any kill on either of them here. Um, but just making sure that this Zeus, who is very easy to gank, cannot be ganked by the Earthshaker Fissure Block. Because he will die very quickly. The slow, the split Earth from the Shrak, he's got his own setup up, up against the Zeus. Yeah, they need a, a very aggressive, like, I really love the mid ward in particular because this allows them to be able to see over onto the uh, the Radiant side of the mid lane and see the potential Earthshaker rotating over. I mean, Fisher is such a long-range initiation that just that one long-range stun, even from the Radiant side, could catch out the Zeus, and then the follow-up Split Earth and Lightning could be enough to overwhelm the Zeus. So the warding is really well done by Secret here, playing very much into what evil geniuses want to run here. PPD is now going to be forced to try and do constant pulling while AUI continually forces out Zai. And Zai's had a real hard time down here. Only two CS. You're talking about him being forced out. Like Zai's only just TP back and he's using shards to farm up the lane. But when this happens from fear, your static link force him back underneath the tower. Life is just hard, but not as hard as it is for Universe, who still hasn't managed to crack his second level, and is being zoned out really by one S4, trouble in middle. Koro gonna tether himself in, but then again, S4 wants to have a crack at this lightning boss still on cooldown. Oh, really low to bell. He's gonna go down. S4 Alley. He can't reach him in time, so S4 will survive. Koro, right place, right time, and right Dota channel. They may even go for more. The crazy thing is, with this dual combo, they're able to share each other's bottles through the tether. And that means they can keep the pressure on Kuro even chasing Universe far into the top lane. Yeah, Samael, I, I think he realized that, okay, with the Wiz Tether, they're going to be able to dive me, and he just tries and turns, and maybe just didn't realize he wasn't going to be able to output enough damage. Also, there was the Winter Wyvern who was going to come in, who was, could have potentially gotten off a, uh, a save via the Cold Embrace, but unfortunately, AUI was just a second too late, and now is going to be forced back as S4 and Kuro take control of that four-minute room. Yeah, which means instant life, instant manner for both heroes as they share their own fate. Want to keep a very close eye as well on Arteezy because while all this is going on, EG's attention is being dragged towards the middle lane while Arteezy getting more and more space. I'm seeing him with the boots and the gloves so far. I'm wondering if this is going to be the early Midas for Arteezy. Oh, the rotation's coming out. The split earth misses and Zai is hoping to be able to get Samuel! the Oh! Caught! The Fissure might be able to block him enough time. They embrace the mail, but S4 is waiting. One more second on that Lightning Bolt. Zai's already dropping low for the Lightning Bolt. They are climbing. S4 is able to get the kill over on Shrek, but it's tip for tap. With also that Tusker going down to continue to chase Owie, who goes onto his hovels to try and run back to base. He'll survive while Fear chasing after Puppy on the bottom lane. He's got traits, got the movement speed on Puppy with a plasma field. The damage, not enough. He realizes Shallow Grave's still available for Puppy. It's not easy to find that kill. And the TP in from Zai, maybe he can shard up and hold Fear close in the tower. That looks like he's not going to give it a shot. Not while the Radiant Creek Wave is still in force. Middle lane, S4, stun on him. There's a fissure from PBE to set up, and Samael just makes it look easy with the Lightning Bolt. Two deaths on Samael, but if they can get a couple more kills on just this one pickoff on Zeus helps Samael out in an incredible amount. I mean, being able to bring in that experience for the last track is a serious factor. Obviously, he needs a lot of gold, but levels mean so much. The faster he gets to that level 8, has the maxed out Split Earth and Lightning Storm. He is a significant force that can pretty much pop almost any hero in this game. If you lead with the Fisher, you follow up on anybody else, you're going to be able to kill them, except for maybe the easy. Top lane goes for it. God's Drake, there's not oh. enough damage to kill him. Universe down to 25 HP. Don't know if calculated or just lucky. 
Poor Universe, man. They are putting That's so much pressure. Again, the fish. This time, though, the Lefracs don't come follow in time. And in fact... Yeah, there it is. Randar still on top. Not really Randar. S4, let's the Thunder God's Wrath rip. Meanwhile, Owie on bottom lane. Okay, he's just embracing himself to hold Zai back. I think that's exactly why PPD was really trying to force that kill there in the middle lane in order to try and stop S4 from picking up his level 6 because there wasn't anything Universe can do there. He was brought to 20 HP and had to run himself back to the fountain. Of course, the moment that S4 hits that level 6, he's going to pop his ultimate for the kill. And that means an easy one. 3 for 1 on S4. Samael and PPD again thinking about it for Kuro in the neighborhood. Going to spread out the balls and try and have a crack into Samael. But the Fissure will keep S4 at bay for now. But they've still got four more bottle charges between the two of them. So they're perfectly all right, Kuro and S4, going for this. And in fact, the extra TP support's going to come in. There's no vision from the Radiant side in this area. And in fact, they actually use Zai to refresh up both of the bottles. In fact, Zai now with a shard. Samael, they snowball in. Samael's in trouble, but not dead yet. The pulse Nova ripping through Zai's life. Kuro's keeping him alive from down in the river. And then maybe they can actually turn this. EG right behind on the S4. The fear plasma field, the damage. It's not enough to kill off Zeus. Kuro kept Zai alive most of the time in the shards. It Beautiful. keeps fear out. They couldn't chase the city was down at S4. He took it the high ground. 11 seconds till Thunder God's Wrath. If they can get one more lightning bolt into Fear, or maybe just a Whisper of Balls. Fear is critical. Can they get it off? Three seconds, two seconds. The Sal will keep Fear alive. So it will not be enough damage from S4 to find that kill. Incredibly well played by Secret. They are dealing with these rotations. Oh, Kuro. Lightning bolt. They go for the arc as well. Trying to have another crack over on Fear. Unfortunately, the rotations from the Winter Wyvern can't actually save that well. I mean, the Cold Embrace is a minor amount of healing, but it's percentage-based. This early on to the game, it dwarfs in comparison to the, just the raw magic damage that is being output by the Zeus. I got my answer for Arteezy. It looks like we're, we're rushing up into a BKB at this point as we have the Ogre Club as well as the Power Treads. He's been triggering his God Strength every time he can to try and force down this Tier 1 tower on the top lane. Currently brought it down to half of its life. And this is also keeping EG with their eyes on the top lane. Because they're worried if they leave it for too long, Arteezy's just going to cleave through it all. Yeah, now movement speed is pretty critical here for this Fen, so the SNY is also an option. Um, just being able to stay ahead or keep up with the Razor is a very critical factor, coupled with the Tether. You can pretty much get to max movement speed, then you throw out the War Cry, and 522 is there, right? So I, SNY is a potential option as well. BKB may be a necessity, um, though, just because there's so much magic damage from EG. Yeah, that's what I was worried about, not to mention the long-range control stuns. But then again, if you throw out the fish and you're still going to walk around it, and you burn like three four seconds worth of your BKB time just walking around a rock wall. It's not the kind of landscaping you really had in mind. The big question for me is, what are they going to do with Universe? Uh, the Phoenix is a very special offlane in the fact that he can do so much in the mid game if he's just able to get levels, but it's so hard for him to make the laning phase work oftentimes. Uh, Universe got caught in, the, in this sort of trap where he's facing up against really good supports who are playing it well, and the supports actually got a, an experience advantage over this Phoenix and were able to just man up against him every single time. The Phoenix couldn't fight against that, couldn't push back against the support, so every single time he felt pressure, he was the one who wiltered first so he didn't get any experience out of this lane and he still doesn't have his level six he's pretty much a non-factor at this point toby the last time we saw him was in that middle lane fight where his fire spirits damage was so minimal that it was actually being outdone by the healing of Kuro. well one of the options he will have is once you see this razor finish up mech that fear is probably going to group up with the rest of eg uh it could be with a little as well or they could just try and do like a 3-1-1 but that will allow the phoenix to move down to the bottom lane then universe gets his time to hit level six then maybe he'll join the fights but it's the time to farm it's the time to play catch up while the rest of his team potentially unless they find themselves in team fights they don't, they don't really want that what they kind of want is just to force secrets hand to always be looking where eg is moving because that was one thing which secret has already shown very well today during the semi-finals they know how to efficiently move across the map and come up with a bad trace. Now middle lane, lightning, follow-up stun, S4's in real trouble, the pulse Nova, Kuro could not keep him alive. And that's just a good kill from EG.
Yeah, I believe Kuro even cut his tether half a second before we see uh, our, our Zeus end up going down because he realized, okay, there's no way it can save him, and I don't want to be too close to that last track. So um, that was a smart move by Kuro and EG, another well-executed gank, especially with leading Samael moving forward in order, in order to make sure he got a good Pulse Nova range. Well, Artesi's finished his next item. We won't see if it's Ness and Y, but he does go for the max movement speed you were hoping for. It just comes with a cost, and that's through the Mask of Madness for Artesi. He hits hard, and he hits fast. Yeah, this is easily one of the most damage-efficient items, gold-efficient items, for a Sven to pick up, because you already have such a big damage increase through God's Strength, and you're a melee hero, so movement speed is incredibly important to you, so you get the movement speed there, but obviously the attack speed, just being able to get the added benefit out of that God's Strength damage increase. Well, on the bright side for EG, this Phoenix is rapidly approaching level 6. In fact, he's only one level now behind Koro. I'm, not, I'm saying that's a great thing when I'm actually comparing him to supports for Secret. But their offlaner of Tascar is just behind level 7. So he's not too, too far behind the rest of Secret. And mainly it's the level 6, because once you get the Nova up and running, as also the panel was saying, it's very difficult to kill off that egg. Maybe now with the Mask of Madness for Sven, they can rip through it, but that means Sven's going to walk into point-blank range onto this egg. That's not a simple task to do when you've got a lot of stuns and control coming in from EG. Yeah, I think there are two things that synergize really well with the Phoenix egg. Um, one are heroes that are able to, to have stuns and can actually initiate. So, for example, Lion with a Blink Dagger, Earthshaker with a Blink Dagger. Those kind of heroes can provide a big disruption provide the disables to allow the egg to come off in time, and also heroes that are relatively squishy can, have, but can output huge amounts of damage in short periods of time. So your Leshrac, your Razor, both of these heroes are heroes that you probably want to target early on into the fight, otherwise you're going to be feeling 500 damage per second from each one of them. So if they can actually draw attention onto the egg and allow the Leshrac and, and Razor to be able to get up and close and start dealing that Pulse Nova damage or start getting that Static Link damage stolen, uh, it's going to be a hard time for Secret, even if they do kill the egg, to win the fight. I'll say Secret are grouping up. PPD just bit of, had a bit of a mission there. He's trying to check out what's happening inside the Radiant Jungle, so he left one Observer Ward behind, watching the stacks and watching when they're being farmed up. And they had another Sentry Ward just making sure there was no vision around the upper part of the river if you are going to try and flank in from the left. It's and time while to they smoke. do that, now they smoke up. Yeah, it's definitely time to smoke because AUI has just picked up his level 6 Winter's Curse, obviously being a pivotal uh, uh, ability for them to be able to have to successfully get these pickoffs on even the strongest of heroes, and that's why they rotate bottom, right? The Sven just showed himself if they could have gotten a pickoff on him, it would have been major. Plus the, the Winter Wyvern, as much as it was a bit of a detriment for in the early laning phase is being a support to try and save the middle lane up against magic damage. Didn't really work out too often there. It is a huge counter to the Wisp. And this is really smart PPD. I think they've cottoned onto this fact because everyone is missing from the map, but then again, maybe EG haven't. They're hovering around, but they're not actually having a look in. Winter Wyvern could potentially just ice burn up, but yep, with the God Strength of Battle and the Mask of Madness, already Seeker have taken Roshan. EG coming out. The Shards cannot catch PPD out of position. In fact, Arteezy, Snowball's coming up, it's coming in from Zai, he's going after Aoi, but doesn't actually get there the whole entire way. So they embrace him up, and Zai being kept alive with Puppy as well as Koro, relocating nice him back save. into the pit, keeping him alive. And this does not give EG a position to punish Secret. In fact, they may just still go in for the relocate there, they have to protect him. Raze has already popped that eye of the storm, and Arteezy just moves up to the high ground to ensure they don't come any further. Then again, Koro, maybe a little bit too close. The shards and the stuff, he's on the wrong side of it, but PPD's front line, the Fissure, Koro so low, Ow, he's there, but he can't do enough damage, and Arteezy just can't reach past the shards. They have to force off from away to safety, that's from S4. And the shard to block the ramp, no deaths from either side. Just very, very close escapes. I mean, even when it was, like, there were so many good plays there from Secret. Getting outside of that Roshan pit, they were potentially in a bad position to get caught by Winter's Curse. So Zai, the moment he sees the Winter Wyvern, immediately pops the Snowball, right? Because not only does he have the Snowball to save himself, but he can potentially grab his allies mid-Winter's Curse, which is a huge counter. So he pops that, but then the Winter Wyvern backs up, and he's stuck in his position of, oh no, I'm going to go over the cliff. I'm going to be in a bad position, right? Somebody needs to save me. And that's where Secret cover their allies. 
ally beautifully. And it's not just the Kuro relocate, but it's the positioning of Secret as a whole to make sure that evil geniuses couldn't take advantage of the sort of mispositioning from Zai due to the snowball that, you know, was a good idea but didn't work out as they expected. And then of course Zai's follow-up, he just keeps shouting when you've got such a, a narrow choke point, how is EG meant to move forward and play up against a hero like a Tusker if he's actually sitting in this back position? It's... It's just great play by all. Now PPD again, like he's hoping he can just do the basic combination now. Secret don't have vision of this, they see some mail in the mid just throwing out lightning, but that kind of means to Zai that maybe he can have a crack some mail and he's getting caught out by the shards, but with the support right behind him he's very, very happy to be in such a position because it means Secret may initiate over the river. Yeah, another good amount of synergy that I don't think we've talked about just yet, but it's the Razor, who's a natural mech buyer um, with the Leshrac, who is a hero that obviously needs the added sustain from his allies, and if you don't actually have healers, having some sort of core that can get a mech is a huge benefit. It really synergizes well with this squishy intelligence hero. So um, this is actually going to play very well into the favor of evil geniuses when it comes to team fights, but I really feel like Secret just kind of outplaying I can see PPD. He's walking up the hill. He doesn't want to come this way. The Shards of Fissure, he gets three with a ton of stop. He's got Echo Sam available too, can't get it off in time. Puppy Shadow Wave will be able to get the kill. Ooh, and an early four staff being picked up by S4 does help Zai get out of position there, where he was going to take a lot of damage from the Lesh Rack. I really like this early four staff play. I think it makes a lot of sense, particularly since we do have so many critical disables. If there's a Fissure lead in, he could save an ally from the follow up split Earth that's just naturally going to follow. Mm hmm. I was actually able to help him out too when they're fighting on that bottom rune area. Universe? Okay, this just looks too easy for RTZ. If he runs after a universe at the moment, he's just gonna end up dying because Aoi and Samael are both waiting for him and now a little too close. He but Aoi might be holding him for the moment, but it's not gonna happen. Yeah, Samael got spotted there and Kuro was ready to go with the relocate save as well. So, uh, Team Secret are getting, as we watching Team Secret, like, are playing beautifully and defending their allies and making sure that everyone does get out alive when they come down to these engagements. Secret is taking more of an advantage because EG are the ones looking for these kills and they're just not finding the openings right now, which means Secret are getting more of an advantage through farming. Yeah. Well, they got to get more of an advantage with this T1 town dropping as well. Universe sitting at the back lines. He still doesn't want to get involved. He wants to finish up his hand of minus before he does anything else. But losing the tier one tower and they can keep pushing. God strength has not been required to be used. Now middle lane, the shards fly out. The fortifications keeping that tier one tower alive for secret. And fear wants it, but heads for snowball in. They with the walrus punch. They're trying to find this pick off, but fear has to make charge. Kuro will relocate himself in and die with a fissure from DVD. He holds him there. The echo sound is not enough to keep enough space between Razor as well as the rest of secret. But Samal comes in with a pulse nova. Going for Polly, but the shuttle grace making it difficult. Ali will also arrive. Samal needs to finish the job. Finally, he will be able to do so. So it's a two for one trade off. PPD lucky to survive. Meanwhile, on the north lane, Zven with the god strength is taking out the tier two tower. Yeah, it does come at a very heavy cost. Kuro, though, by the way, able to relocate at the last second there back up to the top lane in order for him to help out the Sven take that tower, but also saved his own life in the process. I think evil geniuses are not going to be they are happy with the kills they got, but they just didn't get enough, in my opinion, to make it worth the trade off of tier two tower in the top lane. Arteezy is going to be massive, man. He already has that BKB plus Mask Amandis with the Blink Dagger now being picked up. This is an incredibly aggressive build from Sven, and it's just the way I think Arteezy needed to play it for this game. They have to make sure they've taken a small advantage now. They gotta build that advantage from here on now. And with the initiation too, like Sven's very, very tanky when he jumps in. There's four points up in Warcry, so you're giving bonus 20 armor, high movement speed, the immunity which comes from your BKB, and your ability to jump point blank range with a huge amount of damage to even one, no, it's not be one hit, but maybe three or four hit down Samael. Uh, Winter Wyvern won't survive very long, and I would be very, very careful about PPD ever getting a stun off, because he'll get stunned himself. So they have to keep their eyes open to see where Arteezy is coming. Just like now in the mid, jumps in, goes for Universe, Nova's available, but the damage Ooh. is just too much. Zeus will help out with Thunder God's Wrath. Now we have very quick TP in. PPD is already fairly injured as well because he got some spill damage. Obviously hitting every hero with that with that Thunder God's Wrath. Yeah, I mean two oh, heroes like round that. Round two, they're going in after some mail. The gold strength still hasn't worn off, but the embrace will keep Smell alive. They hold Sven there too, but not for long. In comes S4, Kuro. 
It's not a bad idea from AUI to use that Winter's Curse on a BKB hero like that. Maybe they could have actually followed that up if there wasn't the relocate from the side. Unfortunately, AUI, his choice to do that Winter's Curse meant they didn't have anything to punish the kind of aggressive relocate play. By the way, I just want to say that Kuro's positioning of that relocate was beautiful, right? Like, he puts it aggressive, but not overly aggressive where he's in the range of the tower or potentially any of EG right away. Artie's got to get out of here. No BKB charge. PPD starts with a stun, but he blinks away just in time. They know he's in the tree line. Samel goes for the stun, hits it perfectly. Artizi will die. Nothing can save him. God's strength. They even commit the Echo Slam from PPD. A little bit of overkill. That well, would have been. They get the big one. That would have been so impressive if he had managed to actually TP away in time. That clutch blink dagger timing. Now it looks like they're gonna fight in middle lane already. Universe leading the charge here with the A. His eyes right on top of it. He's trying to kill it off. There's PPD with a stun. Minerva's about to crack. They're not in range to get the stun, but Universe means he can come back full life. They chase after S4. There's already two down. The Shallow Grave's there, but more surprise. And S4 will not survive this. PPD holds me with a stun, but the Thunder oh. got He gets time to get it off. It is a three and one on the sidelines at the moment. Still an excellent fight for Evil Geniuses, getting the pick off in this and immediately rotating. I love the fact the Universe was sitting in the trees, waiting that one out. He's like, guys, you've gotten that kill. If you get back to middle right now, I can force this fight with the egg. He did it perfectly. Now it goes 8-8. Eight, eight. Well, it has been a low killing game. It's still been very action intense as both of the lineups coming close to each other. Just going to straight off trades. If we do look over at the map, there's only tier two towers left for Team Secret. Yeah. While EG... Well, they've lost. They've lost quite heavily, too. The fact that the top lane has no external towers anymore. They do, however, still hold their tier one tower in mid lane, which you would think in most games would give them a positional advantage. But the fact you're going up against a Wisp kind of throws that one out the window. Yeah, especially the, the advantage that was lost there from Secret is particularly important when you have a build-up item like Bloodstone that was completed just before that fight. Samael has 11 Bloodstone charges already, and we've seen what Samael can do when he gets ahead of the enemy. I'm still interested to see if you can do it up against this enemy. There's so much damage in the hands of Sven, and Arteezy just keeps farming. They're giving him as many stacks as possible. He's rapidly approaching 12,000 net west. Smell is nipping on his heels, and at this point, Smell is obviously able to continuously do a hell of a lot of damage as long as the mana is there, while Arteezy is a little bit more tied to his god strength until he's capable of buying up a big damage dealing item, which more than likely in this style of game, well, you can go Monkey King Bar, you can go Daedalus, you can kind of go whatever you really want to for this event. A scouting Zeus ultimate being used there to see if they can spy out if evil geniuses were going for a smoke tank or something, but it's simply EG playing very defensively right now. They know, they, they've seen that blink dagger from RTZ. They're a little bit afraid of getting caught out by that one. Usually when you see a blink dagger, this kind of build from the Sven, it means a lot of aggression, it means a lot of pickoff capabilities, and you're going to take that one kill and then immediately take his tower afterwards with the physical damage increase of God's strength. Well, Secret are actually backing up and spending a little bit more time farming, probably because because of that last team fight that they lost. If they lose any more, this game's rapidly spiral out of control for them. But Evil Geniuses, the interesting player to watch here in these team fights is actually going to be the Winter Wyvern. AUI, his position not only in Winter's Curse, because he's a direct counter to the Wisp, but he's also a direct counter to the Spen, where a primary source of damage is all physical. So Cold Embrace, if he's able to target the right hero at the right time, he could completely mitigate the Spen's heavy amount of net worth that he has accomplished. Which is where that S4 has a step up to the mark as well as the Tusker. A Tusker at this point is going more utility. We've got Mech now being completed 24 minutes into the game on the Tusk. He's walking back to base now to pick it up. Uh, and over on Zeus, the Bloodstone is rapidly approaching completion as well for S4. We got a couple other items. Glimmer Cape being picked up by the Wisp. It is obviously a huge increase to the survivability of Kuro, as well as a potential save for some allies. I love Zai's build of the mech with the arcane boots. We're going to later on see Guardian Greaves, though I'm not sure how early he wants that item. Uh, perhaps a Blink Dagger or something. Some sort of saving mechanism, I think, would be better before the Guardian Greaves is complete. Samael. Oh, I thought he was about to try with the initiation on the Zai with the lightning. Wouldn't really have that much follow-up, however, the universe would have to Icarus dive himself in with sprites to try and get in his way to allow for the Split Earth follow-up, because it was a pretty long way across the river. How long have we got until we have Roshan up? In fact, I had no time. Roshan is already up and available. So this will probably be our next mark. Secret can, we've already seen they can just jump in and quickly take out Roshan. So EG have to keep their eyes open for this. 
Right now, they've only got one Observer Ward, which is right on top of the Dire Observer Ward, but that will see anyone entering into the pit from the front end. If anyone blinks over, if they, I don't know, they're snowball, but uh, if they relocate him, then none of that will be spotted. Well, there's the Solar Crest. Uh, they have so much Roche taking potential. Oh. Now with that minus armor item plus the physical damage from Sven. They tether in, they smoke in, and the Dyer have... No Radiant time. have no vision of this whatsoever. In fact, even this four, he's found that small little point where the ward doesn't see up to, and that Roshan is dead very, very quickly. Oh yeah, they have no no vision and no time to be able to get there uh, in order to stop secret. So a secondary Roshan going their way. Evil geniuses, I think, expect this. Even if they didn't know Roshan was up right now, they kind of expect Secret to be able to snag this one. I mean, currently, EG want to play on their side of the map. They don't want to move outside of these towers. They don't want to get picked off. They're still trying to complete some of those basic team fight items. Items, such as the Aghanims on Razor. And that Aghanims on Razor is go going to arrive, but I would also ask the big question, how much work is it really going to be doing? Because I'm looking at a lot of a lot of art, which is now signed to arrive for Secret. Artizi has practically finished. In fact, yeah, basically he's finished up his full Assault Cuirass, now he farms up this camp. Mm -hmm. And then you've also got the Weave coming in from Dazzle, who's already up at level 11. So you've got a level 2 Weave available for Secret. Their armor is going to pop through the roof during these fights. I love Samael's build. This is this is Samael through and through, right? Samael's a, a very talented mechanical player who loves to be able to outplay his opponents, right? And we saw it with the SF in that earlier series where he picked up a, a kind of a little bit of a later blink dagger. Sometimes you would see SFs go for a little bit more of a late game build, um, but Samael fully adopting the mid game aggression and goes for the blink dagger and he utilized it beautifully to win several fights. And he's going to try and do something similar here, backed up by the Yule. Scepter. This also means he could have some potential saves for himself against Radiant the initiation of Secret. EG understand where Secret are moving. There's a Radiant Ward just sitting in the, in the just the lower part of the mid river, and I was able to scout up this Ven moving into the Radiant Jungle. Now that also Puppy shows himself on the bottom lane with that Solar Crest. He's just flagging the fact that most of Secret are down there, while Wisp is just the illusions which will chase, and you're hoping they don't commit anything major to this. Uh, in fact, yeah, they won't. It's just a basic attack. Samal blinks up and gets rid of it so they can get rid of the vision at least. And then EG. Like, do they defend this bottom tower? Puppy, now, you've got a dazzle harassing down a bottom tower. You have to do something about this. All right, they must know a little bit more than they let on. Evil G oh, just want to actually cut out these heroes' bottom. Puppy already getting stunned up, but at the same time, Zion being controlled up by Fear. Already sold 112 points of damage. The Icarus dive in. Snowball's the only thing that can protect him. While Arteezy chasing out the Owie. Two hits oh, to no. bring him down. At the same time, Fear, so much stolen damage. 224 points of it. He can carve apart most of the secret team. He's already managed to take two with him. And now can move over to Arteezy. No BKB. Still has the Aegis, but controlled up by the Fissure. They'll burn through him. The Plaza Fuel goes down and Fear's going to be ready. Or is he? He doesn't Samael, have BKB. Wait for the sun. The Echo slams up as well. They just hit into Sven. They take away his damage. Koro, there's no relocate up to save him, but he just keeps with that overcharge going. Puppy behind him, letting off that heal. But again, another Fissure stun to slow him down. Plaza Fuel on the edge of Sven. Koro is doing all the work he possibly can to keep Arteezy alive, and it is enough. Ar Arteezy has more HP than EG has mana. They simply ran out of steam. The Leshrac ran out of mana. PPD used his last Fissure there. Even Fear, his ultimate ran out. He didn't have much more to go on. Uh, that was just beautiful healing from Kuro, and ultimately, another solid play from Secret, being able to stay alive through the initiation of EG. It seems like Secret are very adept at being able to, uh, to address whenever evil, evil geniuses go for a gank or go for some sort of smoked out team fight. Secret are very quick on the mark to be able to respond to it. I want to see if Sumel has a crack at mid. This Dire Observer Ward from Secret's about to time out. It's only got three seconds left in that mid lane. And once it times out, the blink dagger which Sumail has picked up to go with his Yule Scepter is just going to be too easy to find out. In fact, yeah, there's, there's that scouting Zeus Thunder God's Wrath again. He really wants to know where EG is so Secret can get the best positioning and still find the maximum, maximum amount of farm as possible on the map. So no one's in the Radiant Jungle, instantly RTZ heads there. Yeah, PBD is now going to try and take some time to finish up his Blink Dagger. Hopefully he doesn't get caught by the rotation of RTZ. Though. The Observer Ward sees him. Yep. No more joy. No more joy indeed. PPD, oh, he's so close to it. Just needs another 200 gold. He's thinking about Fissure to farm it. He can take two creep hits if he uses it now. Yeah. 
But and we'll I'll require the oh, sun. The relocate up the to top lane. Looks like some male coming in with that haste rune provoked a very defensive response from Secret. Oh, do they know where he is? In fact, they're pinging out saying, I think the, uh, yeah, some male, in fact, TP's down the bottom lane to try and blink forward. The Yule Scepter's on cooldown, but he can see Kuro. Well, uh, they just run away. War cry to pop. In fact, they can't see him. The Dire Sentry Ward's down there. There's no Observer Wards for the Radiant side apart from the one on the right. So I didn't actually see Kuro leave. Yeah, that's a nice defensive factor of the Blink Dagger. When you relocate in, you come back from that relocate. You can instantly blink on the Sven and then go ahead and tether away on the Wisp. Very nice combination. 30 minutes in, and it's then even 10 to 10, with Secret taking a slight lead in both gold as well as experience. Evil Geniuses, though, do have some big items that they finished or are going to be finishing soon. We talked about the Agonims on Fear. Obviously, some mail is host to a, a swarm of items, the Bloodstone, Yules, and Blink Dagger. And he's already got another 3K, so we can afford to build up even more stats. Now, armor wouldn't be a bad idea necessarily against the Sven damage, but you can also depend on just the cold embrace so maybe he goes for some just more raw stats with something like an octarine core which would benefit quite highly if you're managed to get a, a embrace there on the lash rack who has pulse nova out he's not only healing up he's def he's defending against physical damage but he's also getting that spell steal yeah everything looks kind of nice for that kind of thing but uh okay well there's your plate now yep so going to the shivas i don't mind this at all obviously the physical damage from the sven is the scariest part of secret right now mm -hmm. Another Thunder God's Wrath being used by a Secret before the fight's going to begin. And EG might feel like they got a little bit of a window of opportunity where that damage won't do as much. In fact, Fear getting up in the faces of Secret underneath their own Tier 2 tower. Oh, Samel with the Edict is just burning through the Tier 2. Fortification, Secret. Okay, well, they burnt it, but they burnt it late. Which means there is actually no defense on that Tier 2 tower. And it's very easy for EG to keep going when they try and push the next time. Yeah, I mean, the Zeus showing himself in that top lane um, with the, via the Boots of Trammel coming in and trying to push down that lane. There's no Tier 2 there, right? So Evil Geniuses say, go ahead, you can push it all the way, the way to the base. You're not going to be here to defend that middle Tier 2, so we can easily take it with the Aghanim's upgrade of uh, Eye of the Storm and uh, get themselves that extra bit of gold, which is going to almost even out this, this lead. I mean, 5,000 at 32 minutes is not that big of a lead for Team Secret. And let's not forget that most of their net worth is centered on just one hero. That's RTZ, which a melee uh, carry... Puppy's dead. Puppy is most definitely dead. Where PPD he? blinks. He's looking for the fissure. He's out of range. Now he walks just a couple of inches further to get in range. Alone. Okay, okay, for fear. In. They might be coming in. Oh, and he goes out. So Kuro will leave, but you've kind of just sacrificed a dazzle for a Wisp. You're going to give him armor and potentially yeah. with Glimmer Cape movement Kuro could get out. In fact, they're going to shallow grave him and maybe, can he TP? He was thinking about it, but no. The tether away over the Great Wave just keeps running. Kuro, 22 HP. Oh, the going to oh, him up but the air oh, have got oh. him. Oh, oh my this next level escape. Look to middle lane, right? He just bought a lot of time there where Arteza is going to get, what, two, three hits in on that tier two tower with God strength popped. That's a decent amount of chips that Kuro's just bought his team He's through getting, that excellent play. They're getting the hell out of there now, but yeah, Kuro, I Puppy gave him everything he possibly could. The armor, the shallow grave, the Kreet Wave was coming at the right time so he could tether himself out if he could just buy himself a couple of seconds. And I kind of showed you, that's how much effort you got to do to bring down a Wisp. What do you do when he's tethering over to a Sven and giving that same level of heal and potential escape to him? Mm -hmm. How is EG meant to find the deeps to kill him off? Like, the Shiva's guards up a little track. Okay, that's fantastic. Yeah, a little bit more control, a little bit more survivability. Does Fear actually have to go in? I know I mentioned it before, but do you try and go for the Refresher Orb just to find the damage, or do you go a different angle thinking, I have to survive long enough that maybe I can get a... Well, I'm not going to say a second ulti off, but something. I think you need a secondary armor item, so I wouldn't mind the Assault Kiras being picked up for the Razor, and then you have the Shivas um, from the Lesher, right? You're You've got right. the two armor items. I think that makes the most amount of sense. You consider the Refresher later on into the game, perhaps. Well, he bought the Hypersode as well as the Blade Mail, so it will in fact be the Assault Kuras. While the full Daedalus is now completed over on RTZ. This guy's cracked over 20k net worth, and uh, the damage output is... I'm not saying becoming ridiculous, but it's definitely getting up there. 
Yeah. Look at that cute little Fisher Block actually keeping the creeps from hitting that tier two tower. And Samael's already taken the tier two at top lane. As long as he doesn't get caught, but look what Zai's doing. Yeah, he's, he's snowballing in, started with the Glimmer Cape. Support, relocate, Koro's bringing in Arteezy, but the Yule Scepter up, Blink Deck is off cooldown, but Samael can't get out in time, and in fact will deny himself in front of the relocating secret. Good deny. In fact, I'm a little bit surprised he didn't deny immediately when he came down. Oh, secret. Just unfortunately, timing not playing into their faming favor here. 48 seconds too early. Why are she getting a second Shivas? Yeah. I mean, double Shivas, it's it, like the, the Leshrac needs, uh, he feels like he needs some sort of armor item, right? And double Shivas is not necessarily the worst thing in the world. Uh, just being able to have that armor item on the Leshrac, I think, means a lot. He's obviously not going to go for the Assault Curass that's saved for the Razor, so he goes for the Shivas, and obviously Shivas is a natural core item for a Phoenix as well. well that's just the double up, but it's fine. Looks like Dazzle's also getting a little bit more money. We've got a, a VIP booster over now on Puppy to go with his Soul Crest. It's a very difficult to kill off Dazzle, not to mention what that item's going to be going into next. But the one thing which is uh, not surviving is, in fact, S4. He's down to six Bloodstone charges on this Zeus. It hasn't really been his game so far. 5 4 4. He's been doing a lot of split pushing as is Zeus. With the early boots of travel pickup, he has actually been keeping both the top and bottom lane consistently pushed in. Uh, the Bloodstone is still giving him enough mana regen for him to spam out Arc Lightning with impunity. And ultimates occasionally just to be able to spam out evil geniuses just like that. Mm -hmm. I think it's about time Artizzi picked up that double damage room from down the river. Kuro's already got himself a bounty inside of his bottle. Yeah. Gonna, he took another minute and a half before he has to pick it up, but if they can find an opening target, Artizi can just go to work on it. I know the crowd is already getting a little bit excited about the fact he can basically one hit an ancient stack. Oh my god, oh, they're actually they going to can... try and solo Roshan. Look at that damage! This is Ow. actually a relocate Roshan play, and it catches EG out of guards here. They can't even get there in time. Maybe they can clean up one or two heroes. Oh, they lost the West, which means Artizi oh. is stuck here, but he blinks up! A base of Fissure of PPD. Samal goes in right now for the Tusk of the Yule Scepter set up into the follow-up stun. Zion does have Glimmer Cape as well as Cheese. Snowball for protection. He needs a target to come out to. He can potentially just Glimmer and Cheese. And he goes down to Owie. No Cheese being used. No Glimmer. He'll just accept the fate. But mean meanwhile, Arteezy with the back of this double damage rune still has God Strength. And there is no... For actually, there is a fortification to save him. Koro, Shallow Grave. Samael's just chasing him down. Now the Yule Scepter. Koro <laughs> refuses to die. Now he will back into all middle lane, Arteezy a long way down, nice, the 4 star from Estabelle will bring him up as some mail, turns on the pulse over, Arteezy turns for the stun, he's got two locked here, where's oh. the clean, Universe one more swing, can't get it up, he's in trouble, moving over towards Fear, because Universe was put under, the Aegis Simona will trigger him, there's no help coming to Arteezy, they burn him with a sundry, and this is not a tan he asked for, he's gonna go down, evil geniuses defending Seeker as they aggressively push into their tier 2 tower. That's a big kill as well. The Shrek got almost 500 gold from that kill. So and he shared it with plays. three allies as well. So many clutch plays being pulled out by evil geniuses. And it all starts off with that very aggressive relocate Roshan play. Very few times will you see that because most of the time you just don't have the physical damage necessary. I mean, everyone sees that relocate ping, right? So you're just telling everyone, hey, we're doing Roshan, but we expect to take it so quickly you won't be able to get there in time. Evil geniuses, though, I was going to say before that whole entire thing happened, both teams know Roshan is up. Secret spotted it out earlier and it wasn't there and it was getting later into the timer anyway. Both teams knew Roshan was going to be up. That was the opportunity for both teams to, to smoke up and go for the gank. EG did that, but Secret made that very ballsy maneuver that obviously didn't play into their favor. Oh. The hilarious thing is that it was, it was the play after which kind of like tilted the odds. Yeah. Like after you had that blink away, Secret could have just got themselves out of free. Mm -hmm. But when you're walking around as this event with so much damage and just the confidence of having Kuro behind you, like, you don't blame him for trying to force out the tier 2 tower, but you have to remember, EG will be there in Winter Wyvern. This is a fantastic hero for trying to like, just play around with it. Not to mention the fact that the track is very, very farmed up. At the same time, I'm also seeing Puppy now with a full rod, a full rod of Atos on this Dazzle. Control factors are just coming through the roof for Secret. Everyone's got a little bit of everything, and s Force also got 3.7k gold on this Zeus. I'm interested to see where he wants to put, put this money. Is it the Ags? Is it more of a control item? Do you try and go for a side device up against someone on EG? Because you don't have a yeah. BKB on Fear. He did not go for the immunity.
The Scythe of Ice would be a little bit better if maybe he had a Blink Dagger. Instead, he only has got the Force Staff, right? So he doesn't have that full Blink in instant stun. Oh, they're factor. coming. Smoke. Where's that jump? S4 sitting on the back line. So they got Strat gives him the vision. PPD. One hit from RTZ with a Soulball combo. They move over to Fear. And Static Link, well, it is currently on RTZ. Oh, they just turns around. The Nova drops. They need to get in there and finish it off. But then again, you Stonewall is deeper. And they, yeah, she's top of RTZ. The stun from Fear. Maybe he'll be there. There's a male up in the air. S4 off the side for the chasing puck. Puppy into the tier 2 tower with a pulse nova. But Puppy, Shadow Grant will protect him and they will dive up for him. Puppy, it isn't going to last forever. Now he'll go down. Four loss from Secret. EG only losing to Captain, who was the first casualty of that fight. And they even curse up the melee creep so it can keep pushing. Again, the synergy with the Evil Geniuses lineup. This is why Secret need to play aggressive early on. This is why they had to play near perfect because they need to be able to end the game before you see these synergy in team fights that Evil Geniuses are revealing every single time. Razor, static linking up as Sven, and then you embrace him. So that Sven can't even hit Fear. He ends up losing 224 damage in the process of all that. The combination of both Embrace as well as Winter's Curse, keeping him near the Razor, but unable to do anything to him. And exactly what EG wanted. They force into the Tier 3 tower, they chip it down to two-thirds of its life, and they get the buyback out from Sven. That's what they were hoping for, and that's exactly what they got. They also had a buyback from the Tusker, so this money is being expended by Secret, and you're going to see a very, very drastic change in that net worth graph. It just goes straight up by almost 10,000 net worth within the space of three or four minutes. It hasn't been long, and the experience is almost jumping up further than that. Veil of Discord even now being picked up by Universe. This is going to help out the Leshrac's damage immensely. And by the way, the Leshrac is not going to die anytime soon. He's got 16 Bloodstone charges, tons of mana to expend, but he's also finished up the Octarine Core, as we mentioned earlier, with the Embrace available to him, plus a large amount of control from both the Winter Wyvern as well as the Earthshaker. Even the egg being an obvious target for Secret a lot of the time. Some male may not feel much pressure at all, so we can play very aggressively into the enemy team with that Pulse Nova. Start getting that Spell Steal, and the Octarine Core with Pulse Nova is insane if you're hitting five heroes with it. Thunder God's Wrath to scout out all, all five heroes of EG moving down the mid. This isn't for a smoke gank, this is literally just a walk together straight down the mid lane. Oh, and why not? I mean, they're in such a great position. Zeus has for actually going for the Dagon with the gold that he grabs. So trying to get that extra bit of burst damage, I can understand it. They need to try and finish up the Evil Geniuses here as quickly before Pulse Nova, Static Link, these sort of big damage over time abilities are going to work. But I'm not just not sure how they're going to be able to find the correct initiation unless somehow Arteezy managed to find a Blink in and a multiple hero Storm Hammer. I don't see how they're going to win the fights. For now, right now, Atizi just wants to keep the top lane pushed out. That's the primary goal. Samal just also BT'd himself down to the bottom lane. So there's a little bit more space for Atizi just to force EG back. Uh, Secret had perfect vision. In fact, they even saw the ward which EG planted, which now Puppy is coming up here to D-Ward. They used the lightning bolt to get rid of it. So the vision from EG is not really that terrific inside the Radiant Jungle, especially as S4 finds the second ward too. So EG, as far as vision on the Radiant side, on the Die side the map, they've only got one ward in the bottom lane. The rest of it's down to the creep wave and their hero positions. Yeah, and this is, uh, I want to point out another reason that the uh, the pressure was on Secret to try and take this early because look at Evil Geniuses, they actually have two percentage based heals. Uh, the Phoenix's Sunray, which is now maxed out, is based on the Phoenix's HP as damage as well as heal. And then you've got uh, the, the heal coming out from the Cold Embrace as well, which is again percentage based. So as time goes on, this is actually actually going to scale very efficiently for Evil Geniuses. You can watch for their effects as we go into our next fight in a moment. Looks like uh, the line on the box has been drawn by Puppy. Wants to check out and see what's happening just around their ancient area. Roshan is still another one minute away from potential spawn time. Well, we've seen how quickly that can go down. Where's S4? He's going to actually scout on top of the hillside, but that's not where the Radiant Observer Ward is. EG is being a lot more clever. In fact, they're pinging out where they think it is, and yep, S4. No, he's actually... He, he threw two lightning bolts and actually missed the ward, which means EG still had perfect vision of Secret, but Secret will probably feel very comfortable that there's no vision there. Evil Genius is wanting to wait out this next Roshan. They 
again, they have so much value. If they're able to get that Aegis, first of all, Leshrac is well, probably one of the better heroes to get an Aegis, and then she's also being picked up by whether it's a Leshrac or the Razor. Like, it's a lot of value there as well. So this is something that Secret cannot allow in any stroke of the imagination. They have to go for some sort of pick-off or fight and then claim Roshan for themselves. That's their best play to be able to still win this game one. Well, I'll be waiting a while, man. Roshan will not spawn until we hit roughly the 47-minute mark. So they've got some time for this. The rest of the time, just commit to farm. What do you actually want to see Arteezy go next? Like, you got the BKB, you could drop the TP scroll and pick up another, one other big item. Is it just always Aegis on the back of this Ven? Or do you say, you know what, we can keep him alive, do we go for something else? We go for like a Monkey King, bud, you go for extra damage on this Ven. I mean, there's no evasion just yet on the side of Evil Geniuses, so an MKB is not a necessity. But I am actually not sure what his best damage item is at this, at this point. I honestly just don't see a, a better way because he's just going to be kited more and more often as time goes on. His four stats, these uh, veils are being picked up. Like There's so many factors that EG can grab these sort of utility items to try and kite around the Sven. And then there's the natural synergy of Evil Genius' lineup against that Sven as well. So I honestly think that he has to go some sort of, like in my opinion, Toby, let's go Divine Rapier. I mean, let's just go in all in item and try and win that one team fight through one or two hits that manage to pop a critical, eliminate a hero immediately on the onset of a fight and try and snowball that from there. I don't see how he's going to be able to win these fights without some sort of critical all in item like that. That's that's a very, like, you know, all in is the word. If you end up losing that and giving it over to basically anyone on the EG lineup, you are running the risk of just throwing away game number one of this best of five grand final. Honestly, Toby, I look at E-Secret e at the position where they have to make some sort of dire circumstances sort of rush. But the most likely option, in my opinion, would be Abyssal Blade. I think he does need the extra lockdown. It'd be huge damage increase. I'm down for that. Bottom lane, Puppy trying to run out of here. He goes into the tree line. Can Shallow Grave and TP out? The sun's already gone. Maybe he can give it a shot. No, nope. the damage, the no. damage, the fissure is there. That's what they require. The secondary stun. But that's fine for them, S4 was still capable of escaping. And you might be down a dazzle for 60 seconds, but he's got buyback and it's a support for Secret. They're okay with this, as long as Roshan doesn't spawn up, but hey, 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 the big man is up. Another really efficient item for this Sven is actually Heart because he is a strength hero and the big, the obviously the natural amount of strength you pick up from a Heart is very efficient for him because when you increase your stats, obviously, you get a big benefit out of God's strength, um, which is why that Sven is probably one of the most common carries to go for a Heart going into late game. But again, I'm just not sure that without the control offered by Abyssal or an incredible, an incredibly high amount of damage that Sven's going to be able to win these fights is he's kind of not doing it solo but he's um, backed up by just a bit of magic damage from Zeus, and that's kind of it. You, hit the, you hit the mark perfectly, man. It has to be, it really has to be the Abyssal Blade. Hold him in position and then just beat the crap out of him. And you're only going to need maybe one or two hits. The four stars will cause you problems. Now the fact we see an Eye of Scardi also over on the Razor, you're going to be slowed inside your own BKB. Dear. This is really problematic for him. Uh, and Roshan, how fast can it be done? In fact, is Secret even... Yeah, actually, it's not being done fast at all. This isn't Secret doing it, it's EG doing it now, and they're down Damage against Roshan is quite, well, minimal. In fact, yeah. RTZ triggers the God Strength. They want to come in through the top. Fortification will have to be popped. While S4 is adding pressure onto the Tier 2 tower, and EG, they are coming back. Kuro just wants to run away. The Gloomer Cape is up, so our PPD and Universe don't see where they are. They run straight back up the lane, and Zai, with this fresh Blink this Dagger, relocates the mail. It's going to go for the stun. They relocate him for Roshan, and the damage from RTZ is so intense. Roshan's already down, and the cheese will also fall into their hands. They've actually got two cheese now, one on Puppy and one over on Zyme. You can see exactly what Secret were doing there, right? The moment you bait TPs up to the top lane, and they know Evil Geniuses are not going to take Roshan that fast. The moment they bait TPs up to the top lane, all they have to do is back Smile. far enough away. Oh, Smail blinking in, going to go for the full-up on Koro, but actually getting interrupted by S4. Koro will be able to glimmer cape himself away to safety. 
Yeah, very nice lightning bolt to be able to intercept that long animation of the split earth stun. In secret, this is their best opportunity to win the game. They won't get a pick off. Some mail already used the stun. The Yule set the up. Blink Dagger one second. Now he comes down. The stuns and the damage from Arteezy. Samal can tank through a lot. The fidget can't buy the space. 30 seconds on the sideline and PPD. He's locked here. He forced out to Blink Dagger up to try and get close enough for this Echo Slam damage. No follow up stun. He's down for the count. 60 seconds, but more importantly, that oldie's out for two minutes. But look down the bottom lane. The Kareet wave is coming in towards the tier three tower. The fear is already coming back to defense. Yeah, I think he realizes what Arteezy can do. He's really hoping to be able to force a TP out from that bottom lane, but it's just not going to happen. Secret has smelled blood in the water, and they're going to strike right here, I think. The PB, even if he does come back, even if he does have a buyback here, they can force that, and they also know he doesn't have Echo Slam, which is a critical factor. So Secret must go uphill here. They must take advantage of the situation they bought themselves. Oh, there's your lightning through both Plasma Field as well as Lightning Storm Samael even try and throw a little deeper one in secret. Okay, oh, wow. now how do you go high ground when the Creep Wave can't even survive to get up there? All right, well, they're just now gonna have to play, I guess, for another opportunity. Find a pick off, try and look for that space uphill. The problem is, I don't think they have any smokes left. Uh, none in the shop and none in inventory. So it doesn't look like they have that kind of plane in order to allow a pick off. So they're just going to have to outmaneuver, I think, Evil Geniuses. E.g., they can do one or two things here. They can go for a very aggressive smoke play and try and catch a secret out of guards. Or they can go ahead and stay very defensive and just wait out the ages. Well, they might have found one. We've got a little ball of light hovering over the riverbed. Well, they, I think they caught a glimpse of him for a moment. Yeah, he's backed up now. So Secret realizing EG are all missing. So Maldus walks underneath their very old ward they put on that bottom river, which is about to time out. And yep, no one in the tree lines. The universe is searching for him. And there's just nothing. There's nothing at all for him. But at the same time, I doubt they're going to be too sad about this, EG. If you can find a pick-off, that's terrific. But you've already gone through three minutes of this duration of the Aegis of the Immortal. So, Arteezy may not get the best use out of this. Not unless Secret are going to force something within the next minute or so. And that's exactly what I think they're looking to do. He's got 6.2k gold on this event. Just yeah, run it. Like you could just run it straight down top. So two minutes left on it. Watch that timer. If we hit 53.30, then no Arteezy is not going to be walking around with it with immortality. Buybacks are going to be pretty pretty critical here. On the Radiant side, we only have Razor and the Leshrac who have buyback. The rest are actually just a yeah. little bit separate. He's up so far. Zai's coming in with the Glimmer Cave. They're trying to kill our puppy, and they are going to isolate him at the same time. Zai, take it easy. They snowball in. PPD, Echo Slam is available, and maybe he can survive. No, he can't TP out in time. The last two, the Nova coming in. Some mail needs to oh, win. Oh, crazy. Actually locked up by Aoi 2000. Now Zai will trigger off the cheese. They have brought down. Well, again, Dazzle on that ball. He doesn't want to buy back. He's still oh, alive. Oh, he's still locked in. And then the Storm Ball. They get the control. The Storm Ball is chasing up the Flying Rat. But it's not going to be enough on Fear. Battling up against the rest of Secret. The Storm Ball up. Fear at least gets rid of the Sigils. It can freely move for the Shards. He's still locked him in. The Mail comes back in again with Universe. Sorry, Aoi. On the front lines, the Shiva's guard by space and fear. Actually has time and he's draining out the damage. 168 points, Arteezy. Here Locked comes inside the, the snowball. He's holding him in, but where's the stun? They go to fear some mail. Pulse Nova is gonna go down. He still has the glimmer cape. They see him for the sentry ward. They've got him down. S4 trying to push in the middle lane in the meantime. And Arteezy adding pressure on top. They do not want EG to push. Samail coming in big there. That was AUI 2000 though. That was the reason he was able to turn that fight with a beautiful Winter's Curse to stall off that whole entire entry. Secret could have, I think, crushed that fight with the onset, but Winter's Curse stalled them up and then a beautiful embrace later on in the Bottom fight. Lane, the to be able to save here. The level two coming in. That's Samail on the back of Universe setting up for S4. If they can get this pick off, it's a huge window opportunity. And is there going to be the denial through the Bloodstone? But that's still 43 seconds that Zeus is on the sidelines. He's now down to seven bloodstone charges boy that buyback from samael definitely paying off now he picks up the boots of travel level two tps into the razor to be a part of one kill on the tusk now gets to be a part of another death on the zeus he's back up to nine bloodstone charges and he also has the full scythe of vice completed another big item to be picked up and then consumed uh the moonshot has been consumed by arteezy 4.4k gold still on him 
I kind of feel like evil geniuses, unless they want to go for a pick-off play with this recent Scythe of Ice. Ooh, that Stormhammer actually snagging both Universe and Fear in that middle lane. But again, unless they want to go for a pick-off play at the Blink Dagger Scythe of Ice reveal, which it seems like that's the play here. This is very risky, though, because they don't have any buyback. Secret actually have all of theirs, and they should kind of know with the way that Secret... Mail. There it is. Blink Dagger, Scythe of Ice, and Puppy dead on the Pulse Nova. They carve through the Dazzle. He still has buyback. All of Secret have buyback. But it looks like EG are ready to push down the bottom lane. Yeah, Evil Geniuses may just stumble into a bad play here. Secret, with all those buybacks, probably can win the fight. And if EG do not get enough kills, don't manage to get buyback gold for these heroes, or still left with timers, Secret can then just five-man down middle, potentially take a full lane of racks. Here they come. Fortification triggered. They'll protect the racks with a fidget on S4. Follow-up done by Samal. Not going to work. There was the four star away the safety by S4 and with the Glimmer Cape he can move back the front lines Fia already on those front lines being punched punched around by the Walrus Punch but Owie able to embrace him up so Fia locked in controlled can he actually oh, get back out they can't they actually hold him up he can't actually do anything he's down 120 seconds on the sideline but the buyback will bring him back up in time but then Fia he's still just standing on the front lines doing the work Puppy now he'll drop there's a triple buyback a quad buyback in fact from Secret Universe trying to give this life back and then we'll blink himself away to safety. They actually get out after taking out the melee racks with mass amounts of buybacks by Secret. Insanely good play from Evil Geniuses. I mean, the setup there. Again, AUI seeing that Sven was running forward, not opting to go for the Razor because the obvious static link that was going to be available there. He instead tries to jump AUI, but the thing is, AUI saw him coming and had the Winter's Curse queued up on him. So the moment that Sven blinks in, he instantly gets Winter's Curse. He does manage to get a stun off on AUI. He doesn't manage to eliminate that Winter Wyvern, who's been such a bane of his existence so far and they just easily clean him up and then the rest is secret quickly fall and then EG on top of that managing to back away before they're punished by the buybacks mm -hmm. they just managed to force out so much for secret and now have bought themselves a gigantic economical advantage look at that gold graph 20,000 is what EG have so far here in game number one and they're looking to come down middle lane and maybe make a bigger dent this money needs to kick back up again as well for EG, and they may even... Oh yeah, it's not even worth waiting out the time for some mail. He's got three minutes without a buyback available. So EG still has to be a little bit more careful about where they're going. I love how to fear. While he's realizing that there is no Monkey King bar, just buys a Talisman of Evasion before coming up high ground because he got the BTs, so he can easily just TP back into the fight after a buyback. So they attack into the tier 3 tower with the Eye of the Storm going to work there. The Mask of Madness being repurchased <laughs> oh, by Arteezy. This he's is trying to have another play. play. On fear, there's just no way to kill him off just yet. Maybe now, lock him in with the shards. In they come for the walrus punch, but fear four stopped away. He's got the space on him, and secret, they're being baited out. They're actually asking them to come outside the base and fight. And there's the jump down. Zai with the shards, they found fear. Snowball's coming in. Maybe he can get the walrus punch up, but Owie still way in there, embracing up fear. They haven't got the kill, in fact, Zai being isolated. The double sun there is for he can't help out with the damage of fear. Forced up does the shards. Can't lock him in. Secret, they can't find the opening. The facts of mail wants to slow him up. They dive in with the Icarus into the Sheevers as well. Heads four too slow. And with the suns, we're gonna lose the Zeus. Heads forced down for the count. He has buyback available, or he can wait the one minute while Universe wants to go for more. Over is up and running but maybe they can just five man force it down mid they got the numbers evil geniuses they can easily i think take a second lane of racks here and maybe even finish off that range racks at bottom lane they're going to spend a little time healing but there's no reason they shouldn't try and push uphill they'll come in 15 seconds zeus they'll come in now 13 seconds yep. 12 seconds waiting Wait for fear to have <laughs> that's all they, that's all they require at the same time, by the time he TPs in, that's exactly the same time oh, Roshan yeah. spawned. If Secret are capable of winning this fight, they can get back in by taking a quick Roshan. But that's a big if. Force the buyback and then back away to Roshan. Maybe the best play. But there it is. Secret are going to be able to get this fight, it looks like. They Where's your eye shot? Initiation. Fear still on the front line. There's Stormbolt. Fear down a half line. They got a lightning bolt. Fear having to be embraced up pretty early here. 
And Zai wants to keep it, man. Then the jump in. Walrus punch on Samael. They're very low on the call. Samael backing up. You remember, this buyback is not available for him for another minute. So if they can pick him off, they have a big opening. The Lightning Boss is trying to slow him down. High shards off call down. Try and lock him in. They found out. He's a big one. Crit him down. 1400 on the damage. And then an isolated Nova. They can get rid of this Phoenix. And they're going to. Down for the count. Double kill for Artizi. Samael luckily able to TP out in time. TPD as well. The shards give him the vision. The snowball in. He actually got him on the cliff side. How did he find him? Well, one walk can help that answer that question. It's a triple kill for Artizi. Grinning from the mud columns on the low ground to get the kill on the high ground. <laughs> Excellent play from Arteezy, but what a catch from Zai. They need, you have to get excited about a pickoff like that. Yeah, you say, it's just a supporter shaker, though. What can it really mean? Well, oh, he needs Smile. every pickoff. They can yeah. doing this in the mid. He wants to jump up to rest four, buy more space, but Zai with a snowball available. G is going to come back in. Zai losing life so quickly. He's down. No buyback. That is a hundred second window opened up by EG, but they're still looking their wounds from the last fight. Team Secret got to go for the split push play here. They got to go in through the top lane and force Evil Geniuses on the defensive while they wait outside. Oh, I don't want to. It's S4, Kuro, and Arteezy. Like, if they also knew, if they only knew that Roshan was there, but then again, is that even going to help? I know having a second life during these fights is probably going to be useful. The cheese won't be as much. They should know. It's just, it, Roshan's been for a little while here. If it was an early Roshan, which I didn't see. We'd be getting towards the end of the timer, or maybe we've already reached it, so... The Dazzle uh, Weave just scattered it out. Yeah. So, Secret are very well aware that this Roshan's alive. The Relocate is up if they just want to pop in. But what's Sven going to do now? Drop this Mask of Madness that Arteezy reinvested back into? Mm -hmm. The moon shot, the attack speed was just not enough. Fear can pick up his butterfly. And that's huge, right? The, the, the Sven has no room for an MKB. Even if he had the gold, he'd have to drop Mask of Madness, pick up the MKB, and again, then you have a six-slotted Sven. There's no growth there available. Mm -hmm. And if Fear actually buys the butterfly, he doesn't have buyback, and he doesn't want to risk that at this point of the game. Not when we've just crossed the owl mark here in game one. And Arteezy, whatever they can do to stop this creek wave from entering the base, they're doing it. Lightning bolts, stuns, storm bolts, everything they've got. Now they jump in. The Hex and Arteezy, they need to try and save him. Really? There is the Gary OK down. Samalo took so much damage to inflict that into Arteezy, and they're healing him up as quick as they possibly can. Fear retreating back out. But S4 wants to keep up with this. He's got four staff available. Arteezy with Blink Dagger off cooldown. Stormball can't get close to PPD, but one hits down the creep wave. Remember Roshan's a lot. PPD with a stun. That Not Mask again. of Madness is turned on, but the damage, okay, now it's turned off. They don't have the amplification, but you do still have the Dazzle behind him with that Shallow Grave points. And they might be able to find, okay, yeah, they're looking for every single wall they can possibly find of, of EG that might be watching Secret Movements. I was a little bit scared there with that Fissure laid out on the Sven. I was afraid the Team Secret two times in a row would be baited into chasing evil geniuses and immediately run into a bad fight. EG have shown incredibly good kiting abilities against Secret going into this late game. Here we go again. Poppy starts with a weave. At least going to drop down some mail as well as Fear's armor. The eye shards come in, and with Zai, well, he wants a snowball. It's more of a fear thing right on him, and then they embrace him up. Some mail still here on the front lines. Have you coming a little bit closer as Fear is still the only solid tank, but they get rid of the melee racks, but Fear isolated by the shards, have to be forced off the way, and now comes Arteezy on a Samael, he brought him down, 45 seconds on the sideline, wants to find more, Blink Dagger still on cooldown, the shards come up, they get the vision of PPD, but this time, they will not be able to stun him before the TP is completed, but with Lestrade down for 35 seconds, they're making a beeline for immortality, and that's Roshan. Yeah, the problem is, I don't think Roshan means nearly as much as it used to in this game. It, it could be cheese to Kuro, though, that's one big thing and maybe you could also have like Tuscar with an Aegis of the Immortal so when Zai jumps in you can soak up a lot more. It'll definitely be a factor there's no denying that but it's just not the same as when you used to have an extra slot on your carry and you could give him the Aegis they're gonna have to give the Aegis away to someone else and it will be Ace 4 and sure yep. enough Cheese is picked up well actually didn't go to Kuro went to Puppy instead wouldn't be surprised though if he passed it off to Kuro it's just too much value coupled with the tether. Yeah. Well for now he's holding on to it the full butterfly is now completed on fear. Buyback's available. We've got to keep watching that counter too. Winter Wyvern and Zeus are the only two heroes that do not have buyback on the map, so that's one apiece. But here comes Secret. The smoke down the mid. They're trying to do this sneaky beaky light and then just rip apart the EG base. Fortification is available for EG, however, it is not available for Secret. Can RTZ make this game? Where's the jump? Ellie, up, up. 
As she forced up himself and then blinked away, revealed it, and PPT in for the double stun. Fear also the front lines are teasy. Blinks away after going for the storm ball. He does not be part of this, but Universe might make him part of it. Shiva's guard now to trigger the storm ball, protecting Arteezy for the moment. Where they want to go to? They're chasing up the Universe. Can they kill him? No, they actually just use it to delay the blink daggers away. Seeker desperately trying to disengage. Zai with a blink dagger in five seconds' time. He's running away. EG, can they find him? Wow, yeah, them. they can. How he's on the back. Now Zai, storm ball's also available. He can buy himself some time and there it is again. It's all about wasting time while Samael is chasing down up the puppy. They will lose Zai in the river and puppy will go down to Samael. Two down for secret. EG, open up the window again. Opportunity is knocking. Two rags down, two heroes down. Team Secret are going to be forced into double buybacks here as Evil Geniuses steamroll right through middle and head up to the top lane for the Mega Creeps or potentially just straight to throne. Remember, though, you still have the Aegis Immortal on S4. The fresh Lincoln Sphere over on Arteezy means that he's also got some face movement. They just saw PPD plant down the aggressive ward. They'll get rid of this as quickly as they can. They do not want to have EG having any kind of superiority with Vision some mail. Drops by Half-Life, the Storm Bolt, stopping PPD from getting that Fissure off as well. Arteezy you gotta be careful. Hex up, but then again, Zai tossing his mail up in the Nova. Perfect position on EG. They can't get rid of this. I'll take the stop with EG. BBD just jumps in. The stop will be in the Trump fights in space from Universe. Secret. There is the buyback from Martins and Puppy. Caught outside the base. The Shallow Grave can't do enough. That's four. Maybe the cheese can keep Puppy alive a little bit longer. And Fear, low. But then again, Martins, he can't reach Fear. Embrace up again. He's trying to reach him. One hit. He can't even do that. They have to come back inside the base. There's four for the jump in by Samael. Where's the damage there? It is from Arteezy, the sun will be there, but then against Samal, the buyback, they're using economy to win this game, Universe, that's where Samal will TP onto, directly on the hero, S4, back under the tier 4 towers, Koro, the save, he's keeping S4 alive, the Stormball as well, they drive him in deeper, the top rack still up, relocate up, is actually pulling him in closer towards the fight, buyback is still available from S4, but Arteezy, stranded, possibly dead, Koro still dead, but Fear, he's dropping quickly, but it's too much damage, EG, they look like they're taking another rack, GG! EG will take it, 65 minutes and an epic battle, they take game one of the best of five in the grand final. This is exactly the way this best of five is supposed to be worked, Evil Genius is throwing hero after hero in an all-in play at top to finish out this game and there was just nothing Secret could do with this kind of draft. They fought so hard but unfortunately when pushed this late, Evil Genius' draft man...